John chapter 14 verses 25 to 27. The Counselor of Peace. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I live, leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Hello and welcome. So far in our studies in John 14 this week, we've seen how Jesus' promise of the Holy Spirit will lead to love and obedience. Following the way, obedience to the truth and experiencing the life of God. In verses 25 to 27, we are told more about the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit and how this counsellor brings peace. We need to be a bit careful as we read this, not to read ourselves directly in too quickly. Jesus is speaking with the disciples who are with him. To that first generation of Christians, Jesus gives the promise of being taught all things and reminded of everything Jesus has said. This is important for the authority of the New Testament. Matthew and John wrote their Gospels under the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that we receive Jesus' teaching through them. Mark, writing earlier, preserves the teaching of Peter for us. Luke carefully investigates and draws up an orderly account of Jesus and the Apostles based around eyewitness reports. Paul, James, Peter, John and Jude's letters interpret Jesus' life and teaching with similar apostolic authority. We can have confidence in them because they were guided by the Holy Spirit to write the words God wanted. They did not come up with their own ideas about God, but rather were reminded of what Jesus had taught and more fully understood what it meant under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Jesus encourages them that the Holy Spirit will be their teacher and then promises peace. Peace, shalom, was a Hebrew greeting, but also a farewell. He reassures the disciples that though he must depart, he leaves behind his peace. He gives them his peace. The disciples would not lead easy, comfortable lives, but they did have Jesus' peace in the midst of their difficulties. Ezekiel 13.10 warns against those who pronounce peace when there is no real peace. Jesus, through the cross and resurrection, can offer true and lasting peace, a gift of peace unlike the world's fleeting pleasure and everlasting pain. Jesus repeats the instruction of chapter 14 and verse 1. The disciples are not to let their hearts be troubled. They're not to be afraid. This is not a momentary ceasefire or a precarious truce, but a full peace agreement, complete truth and full reconciliation. The disciples have a peacekeeping mission. They must pay active and deliberate attention to maintaining their trust in God and Jesus. Yet their hope is in the counsellor, here identified as the Holy Spirit, rather than in their own holiness. The fruit of the Holy Spirit will be love, joy and peace, as promised here in 15 verses 9 to 11 and in Galatians 5 verse 22. After Jesus had been betrayed, crucified and raised, the disciples were in a locked room because of fear of the Jews. Jesus meets them with a greeting. Peace be with you. John 19 verse 20. It is then that he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit who brings peace and forgiveness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to trust in you, to have confidence in your word and to receive your peace. Amen.